Hello, everyone. Welcome again to the Badass Podcast, the Batman the Animated Series show podcast, where we talk about Batman the Animated Series. It's a new year at this point, and we are back to wrap up Batman the Animated Series, and we are ending where we began, Sean. <laughs> My name is Clay McCormick. With me, as always, is Sean Murphy. Um, we began this show in Sean's attic on a single microphone, and we're ending our coverage of the animated series in Sean's basement of a different house. Right. Better house. Yeah, this is a much cooler basement. <laughs> I kind of wish we had a camera. Um, we'll get a photo later. Yeah. I'm in my basement bar. I've got a house from 1870. It's an old Victorian. It's got a basement with like a stone, field stone and brick. And it looks like a speakeasy down here. I got a wet bar. So we're basically sitting sprawled out near like copper cups and dishes and bottles of scotch. So... It should go well. Yeah, if um, if I if we lived in the same town, yeah. I would suggest that uh, Badass Beyond be a video show that we do yeah. from town. Here. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, my friend Sean came to shoot me for his uh, ink pulp thing a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, and like, there's something about this space that's really kind to cameras. Like, yeah. you can't take a photo of that wooden door without it looking good. Right. It's like an yeah. old farm door. Um, yeah, there's something about this place that's kind of magical, and they've got low ceilings with like a wooden beams over us it's all ancient the spider webs everywhere but it's mostly clean <laughs> yeah and it is um as you said it is at your basement bar yep. so i have no real structure for this right so this might get a little loose so normally you know how i do a uh, non sequitur i do yes all right so you, i have a good one this time i'm gonna mm-hmm. move the thing a little closer to me because sure. i notice your voice is louder sure um so remember that finger blasting story i told with that actress how could we forget <laughs> So I'm going to try to tell it without using names or shows or directors she's worked with. So this kind of almost bit me in the ass. Uh This is a story that I tell a lot, and I like to tell it, so you inevitably become good at telling it. Uh, A friend of mine brought over her buddy from high school. Um, I tell this story, and he goes, what's that actress's name? And I repeat it, and he goes, oh, I know her. And I go, really? He goes, yeah, I'm an actor. I've been on X as well. This guy has done a handful of shows for the same sci-fi director movies and stuff like that. He's like a, a cameo guy. Yeah. So he's in Hollywood, and I didn't recognize him because I don't watch these shows. Um, so he, in fact, had photos of him hanging out with this actress. Mm-hmm. So were both, uh, were both his hands visible in the yeah. photos? <laughs> so he's like, tell the story again. So I'm like, oh, man, now I'm on the line. and Now it's not funny. Now you know I don't want to get her into trouble, mm-hmm. whatever. So I tell the story, and I finish up with the finger-banging line, and how everyone at the bar thought it was hilarious except for me, and I didn't see it at all. And I turn around, because I bump, kept bumping into the guy who was doing the blasting, and I said, sorry, bro, and I shook his hand. And then you or someone ran up to me and said, go wash your hands, and then the whole story Definitely came out. Definitely was not me. But... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is pre-COVID, obviously. Yes. So uh, I finish the story, and this actor goes, uh, yeah, that sounds like her. Oh. And I go, Okay. And he goes, uh, if I, sh- she was between the, she, she had a husband or an ex-husband or boyfriend at that time. Cause they knew, I stupidly said the show and I stupidly said the year. So uh-huh. he could pinpoint the timeline of who she was dating or married to at the time. So he shows me a photo on his phone with him and her and this guy that she's kind of, you know, leaning on. Uh-huh. And he goes, is this the guy you saw her with? Now here's the thing. If I say yes, he might go, that's not her husband. Holy shit. Uh, so I'm under, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to sweat here, feeling like uh, I don't want to throw this girl under the bus, but what happened, happened. So I, I took the safe exit, and I was like, oh, I was really drunk. I don't remember. All these Hollywood guys look the same, and I changed the subject. So I didn't actually answer the question, but I got real nervous for a second that I was going to call her out, because I think this guy even like went to her wedding or something like that. Well, <laughs> was it the guy in the picture? Between you and me. Yeah, just, only yeah, us. No one was, else is listening. It was absolutely that guy. Okay. Same smirky face, kind of like, um, oh, I don't want to describe what it looks like because that's yeah, a bad no. idea. <laughs> I mean, you've already given them enough to go on a, uh, a scavenger hunt with. It's an actress who knows an actor, and right. we're both on a show together. Yeah. So. And he's a regular and a sci fi <clears throat> series director. So yeah. Does, we're down to 10 people, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> 10 directors. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, this is our wrap up episode. We've covered. All of Batman the Animated Series, which we started in 2015, I think. Why does this take so long? Well, the first season, it took yeah. for uh, two reasons. One, we wanted to wait till we recorded everything. Right. But baked into that was the fact that we lost about half the season of the recordings. And we had to redo them. Right. 
So uh, we didn't end up putting out the first season until almost, I think, a year and a half after we recorded it. Right. So a lot of our hot takes about the world, I think, were a little outdated. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we made it through all four seasons, however many uh, episodes. I have nothing in front of me, so this is going to be off the cuff. So but. let me ask you questions. Um, how many views on YouTube? Mm -hmm. I feel like we generally get about 200 views. Yeah, somewhere in there. For a normal episode. Yeah. If it's you and I talking about Michael Keaton, Batman, mm -hmm. the movie stuff, that probably is a thousand maybe on YouTube. I don't know if I'd go that high. Okay. I, we, on the main Penske file, I don't know if we've ever really broken a thousand. Okay. So. What, so we've got YouTube listeners and mm -hmm. we have other listeners mm -hmm. from what other avenues? Uh, just podcast downloads. Okay. Yeah. And added together, you think we have maybe two to three hundred unique Listeners, I, yeah, probably somewhere in there. Right. I can I can real time text Wes and see if he can give me the number if you want. But. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so, what did you? I was way more familiar with the series than you are. Um, some episodes we saw you did not remember seeing at all. Yeah, there was a. I I think I was probably like seventy five to eighty percent familiar with most of them. Right. Um, but yeah, there was a good chunk that I either didn't remember or straight up didn't see. Right. Yeah. What was something that stood out to you as better than you remember? And then something that stood out as worse than you remember? Um, well, I'll start with worse. I was surprised that season four wasn't as good as I remember it being. Yeah. Uh, once they changed the designs and stuff. Because I remember that being... Um, I don't know if that era was dominated in my head by Legends of the Dark Knight. <laughs> But when we were going back through those, I, I was I was kind of surprised at how much it sort of felt like, yeah, going through the motions. Like I feel like maybe that's maybe that's kind of unfair. I feel like the highs of season four were very high, yeah, because you've got legends and you've got a, a Mad Love, yeah, and a couple of the other ones. Yeah, but I feel like the lows of season four were kind of like, ugh, okay, giant bugs. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, the low point for me. Really getting in and out really quick with stories that are, yeah, you know. Once they capture the guy, it's over. Right. Even the good ones ended that way sometimes, you know? Right. Yeah, I think I would agree. When I first saw season four, I liked how slick it was. Mm -hmm. I never liked the blue and gray Batman. Yeah. And I thought I liked the gray and black with the tan belt. I thought that was my favorite. That's still my favorite color palette, but not as much holds together as season four as I thought. When you yeah. go back and watch season <clears throat> one through three... There's just more effort put into backgrounds. There's um, better pacing. There's more unique stories. And uh, I think the first three seasons hold up a lot better now that I'm mature. I think that that's what I would push on people, even though it has the, the blue and gray outfit, which yeah. I'm not as crazy about. Well, I, I think you're right, because I think the first three seasons feel a lot more like they are their own thing. Yeah. Whereas season four feels like it's trying to be in line with Superman yeah. Which is eventually going to try to be in line with yeah. Justice League. And that's literally what it was, too. Yeah. Like, they revisited it to repackage it, to <laughs> put it together, and then build it into Justice League. Yeah. Which is what I'm doing with White Knight, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, lessons to be learned from yeah. this, I guess. It's funny. So, uh, <laughs> a handful of times, and we'll go back to my question. Uh -huh. A handful of times I've said, uh, oh, you know, when I say it on this show or in a podcast, people don't... You, Bleeding Cool isn't listening for 90 minutes each week just to get me on a gotcha moment. So right. normally, secrets kind of stay here. However, since my announcement of Beyond the White Knight, I've seen a few people on Twitter say, oh yeah, Sean had a Batgirl thing um, set up, but when he had some Twitter trouble last year, this artist bowed out because she didn't want to get sucked into it. I thought that was a secret, but between you and me and these 300 people, mm. at least two of them are running to message yes. boards now. Interesting way to find out people are listening to the show. <laughs> but they, they say it, and they're defending me. Like They still like me in the book. They're saying this other artist, is who I never named, That's that sucks that you would ditch Sean just because of whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're still on our side. But um, yeah, they're on a few message boards that I don't know if you and I would frequent. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I actually was on, when my book Bloody Hell came out, a couple months ago, I uh, I was on a show, a YouTube show called Not Near Mint, and as I was talking, I they mentioned where they could find, say where could they find you, and I mentioned I, I do a Batman podcast, right? And someone in the chat wrote the best Batman podcast, and I went back <laughs> afterwards and I looked, and someone else had been like, oh my god, one of the hosts of Badasses on this show. So I mean, there are All people right, out there who listen to it. So yeah, yeah. Um, 
That's funny. You're wearing this X-Men shirt that has a black and white version of Jim Lee's X-Men number 11. And I'm noticing Wolverine's claws. If he retracted them, they would be shooting out the back of his elbow. Oh, that's the way you got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Twice as long as the forearm. Makes no sense. It's the best. Um, <clears throat> so what's something that was better than you remember about the series? Um, it was more, it, especially in the first three seasons, it skewed more adult than I remember. Because, mm -hmm. you know, some of that stuff you never know thinking back it's like well if i thought it was kind of adult as a kid yeah but then you watch it against like oh no it's very much a kid thing yeah there were episodes of the show which are, are pretty dark and i and and i mean dark in a um constructive way not in the way it's applied to things now where mm -hmm. it's like no this batman swears right. so it's really dark it's like no, no yeah like the as much as i it's not my favorite episode the Rupert Thorne episode we talked about at the time, where with his brother and the flashbacks. And oh, stuff, the train, yeah. That's like that's an episode of a children's TV show. Season one, I think. Yeah, where yeah. it the half of it is a sepia tone flashback, like yep. Godfather Two, <laughs> and ends with the bad Rupert Thorne, who is at this point just a bad guy. Yeah, having this brother's a priest. Bro, yeah, his brother's a priest. They have this relationship that's falling apart, and his, you see his brother's leg get run over by a train, which yeah. causes his leg it's, to be amputated. Well, it's some it's heavy unclear. shit. Oh, you're right. He does knock on his leg, and yeah. it is wooden. Wow. It's some heavy shit for a Batman cartoon. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So, um, man, what else do people do for these retrospectives? What are the what are the worst episodes that stand out in your mind? Um... I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. Uh, definitely the bug one. Yeah. I think that might be the worst episode next to the uh, terrible trio with the three yes. college guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I think in season one, you have the Underdwellers where you got this guy. Yeah. But it was so well animated and it was so weird, even though I didn't love it. I think that's way better than the bug episode. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, one of the things that even as we were watching it, some of those episodes didn't really grab me more now but yeah. i do respect them taking chances like right. the underdwellers one is not my favorite episode but again they're kind of taking a chance focusing on this group of homeless children and batman's sort of around the peripheral a little bit yeah and the other one that i i never loved when i was a kid and i don't know if i love it now but again it's i take i appreciate them taking a chance is the one where he loses his memory yeah that one again. That's yeah. I don't think that it makes sense that that doesn't connect with a child, right? A child me who's yeah. there, like I want to see Batman and the Joker or Batman stuff. Right. I don't know if I want to watch twenty five minutes of Bruce Wayne in Cool Hand Luke, forgetting who he is. You know? <laughs> <laughs> maybe now, maybe a little bit more, but yeah, uh, not really. It's funny. Like as a kid, I I think I liked that one. Mm -hmm. I didn't care that he wasn't in a costume. I liked that when he remembered he was Batman. That payoff is especially potent, especially yeah. when Alfred uh, uses the bat plane to chase Bruce to, to find him, right? And right. then lands it verbally, and the plane's like your funeral. And then it <laughs> lands in the desert. I remember that episode so well that I even remember the theme music for it. Yeah, uh, yeah. which is of course a nod to Shirley Walker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, quick side note on Shirley Walker: if you go on Spotify and download or whatever uh, stream the um, Batman animated series. I think it's series one. It's the blue one. Yeah. There's um, one song on there that's Shirley Walker talking, explaining the theme song. And she calls it like, here's the main theme. And then here is the, re the response. And oh, here's sure. the echo. And for music people, like I'm not a music person. You are. I really found that fascinating to yeah. hear her break down very quickly why this, this works. It's only like 20 or two minutes long, but... Yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, I will. I actually did a lot of um, listening to those soundtracks earlier in the year when I was doing more writing on something yep. I can't talk about yet. Okay, um, yep. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those soundtracks are great. There was another one where I think one of the last tracks is just a piano version of the theme, Yeah, which is really cool. So, it's yeah, it's nice that they throw those in there. Yeah. To, I, don't, I don't remember that one. I'll have to check that one out, though. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Um, <clears throat> so, what about uh, epi stands out, standout episodes? Because Heart of Ice, Heart of Ice was our high high mark that right. we kept measuring everything else to. Yeah, is Heart of Ice still the best episode? It's it's really tough to beat. I feel like we never yeah really came close to <laughs> unseating it. Yeah, 
it's just it's just such a complete story. Yeah. Well told. Yeah. In the amount of time. <clears throat> Every time you go back to it. Yeah. As a sequel or something, it's not right. quite the same. Like I'll probably watch um, the Grey Ghost one more. Yeah. There's things I enjoy slightly more, but if I'm a professor teaching storytelling and animation and all this, I would say, academically speaking, Heart of Ice is the best the best one. Yeah. Um, what about number two episodes for you? Oh, it's going to be tough. Uh, any <laughs> So, Dark, the Legends of the Dark Knight. Yes. Yeah. Well, any listeners of our Star Trek podcast <laughs> uh, will know that my memory retention for episodes is not great. Um, but I remember there being a couple in even season four yeah. where I think I gave a five to, or at least had really high praise of, yeah. and I was surprised by them. Mad love. Yep. Yeah. There was a, oh, um, the other Harley-centric one. I don't remember what it was. And I'm, we're not going to... Harley Ivy? Maybe. May, I, well, I, I like that one, the, uh, the crossover. Yeah. I don't know if I'd call that a five, but I was yeah. surprised at how much... When, How much I like that. What about when Harley is teamed up with Batman? <clears throat> yep. She's got the roller skates at the beginning with the hyenas, and she accidentally steals a dress. Yep. Yep. I think that's a five. For, I think oh, I rated that. Oh, uh, I really liked the, if I'm remembering it correctly, I really liked the one where Bruce Wayne gets married to the Ivy bot. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I yeah. Because I, I, well, yeah. I think the easiest, the, the best way for me to <laughs> parse these out is I can remember what they do with the villains. Yeah. A lot better than I can remember individual episodes. Right. And I remember really liking the thing that they were doing with Ivy, even if they didn't nail it every time. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember, I loved the um, the fake family episode. Yeah. That's really cool. Because that yeah. hits, uh, <clears throat> it's, you know, scary. Yeah. It's a really interesting story. Right in that pocket of episodes where they were, all seemed to be about villains that were either legitimately trying to go... Right, turn over a new leaf or not legitimately, yeah. And how Batman responds to those, yeah. Um, and yeah, they kind of cued into this darkness of Poison Ivy mm -hmm. that uh, was really interesting. This right. idea that she can not only can she control people, but she can grow people, right? Which she can then control and try to and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I rem I on that same track, I was surprised at how disappointed I was with the Riddler. Mm, because yeah. they only kind of do a few episodes with him, and they're all kind of the same episode. Yeah, I think the Riddler is the biggest disappointment for me. Yeah, um, character-wise, because I remember him being really uh, impressive, but when you boil it down, it's he only has one good episode. Yeah, and then they repeat that episode with the the video game um, thing. Right. There's the Minotaur yeah, episode, the maze thing. Is that different than the video game one? That's the same one, right? That's the video game one. That's the video game one. And, and the other the... one is uh, a hallucination with Batman. I think so. See, even yeah. trying to, and I know these episodes. Yeah. I still can't <laughs> distinguish them. Yeah, I um, I was surprised at how bad the first couple Scarecrow episodes were. Yeah. Uh, mostly because of that awful condom head design. Yeah, the big uh, potato sack. Yeah, halfway filled. Yeah, yeah, the re the re tools on him, I think, were both good moves in the right direction. Yeah, the third, the fourth season's biggest gift to us was maybe the best scarecrow design ever. Yeah, although have you seen um, the scarecrow design in the current Batman book by Simone DeMeo? I think it's George Jimenez. Okay, it's really cool. It's it's got it's kind of like Japanese influenced, so he's. The right. scarecrow hat is kind of like one of those kind of pointed hats. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a rice it's very cool. Hat. Yeah. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that noose around the neck design is great. Does he have these big circle things on the side of his face? Like a gas mask yeah. thing? I think so. I yeah. think that might be a Simone DeMeo design. Oh, is it really? If it's not, then I apologize to both of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I love both their art. But uh, yeah, I, I love such a great design. Yeah, it's very cool. For White Knight, I tried to redo Scarecrow with the gas mask aesthetic, and I gave him a really long, weird mask. Mm -hmm. And I never really had a panel that focused on him, so I never really got to show him off, per mm -hmm. se. But he came across looking more like... Um, um, Sandman? Sandman, yeah, thank he you. Like like classic Sandman. Sandman yeah. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but... Right. Yeah, it kind of threw off some readers. Like, I wish I had done more hay-themed 
uh, <laughs> yeah, he accents. Had, did he have like a hat, like a fedora or something, or like a smaller hat? I can't remember. In mine, he had yeah, yeah like a cowboy hat with a sort of tall. Oh, um, sure. Okay. You know that statue in Salem, Massachusetts, of like the first pilgrim. Yes, that's scary. I kind of based off of that guy oh, okay. but with a gas mask, but yeah. I, I, I would, I think Simone de Mayo or George Menes, I think they did it better. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's so. He probably has more latitude than most of the yeah. Batman villains because. Joker, Two Face, Penguin, Riddler. Yeah. You kind of have to hit certain marks with those guys in order right. for it to really come across. Right. Scarecrow, you can kind of do whatever you want as long as it's scary and kind of looks like a scarecrow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. Um, I'm interested that you're leading the charge on this. I agree. This is great. No, I, I keep, usually, keep throwing them. I'm fine. No, I'm, I love because I, I think. I think one of the secrets to my success, if I can talk about myself for a second, sure. is I'm always asking questions. Like, I'm not just asking to be polite. Mm-hmm. I genuinely, like, this drives my wife crazy. If we're at a dinner party, whatever, and I'll say, I don't ask light, I should ask light <laughs> topic questions. Like, oh, what do you think about the weather? Yeah. But I'll be like, uh, I met this guy who was a, a warden, and I was like, what's the hardest part about being a warden that most people don't expect? And that's a good conversation if you've got 20 minutes to burn. Yeah. But if it's just over cocktails, move on to a new question, right? <laughs> but I, I just sink in. I put my hooks in yeah. people. And I'm like, man, I want. I'm never going to meet a warden again. Yeah. This guy yeah. invited me to go to the prison to like. I told him I write Batman. Mm-hmm. Um. But uh. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, like I, I'm fine. What bugs my wife is I'll ask these roundtable questions and people will be like, I don't know. And they'll look at me like, what do you think? Because usually when you ask a question, you just want to tell people what your answer is. Sure. I genuinely don't do that. Yeah. Like it throws, it stumps, it stumps me as much as it stumps the warden and other people I talk to. Yeah. So uh, long story short, yeah, no, I, I love interviewing people. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> what, um, if this was a, a series of one shot comic books. Yeah. Like we, I sort of teased before. I don't know if we're ever going to make this happen. If I say Clay, which one do you want to do? Um, You're going to write and draw it. And you can rewrite it a little bit, but you have to kind of stick to... You know, as I've said before, I think I, I can't think of any specific ones off the top of my head, but I am I think I would go for like the, the B or C level episodes. Right. Because I think the ones that aren't quite there take the pressure off, or, off of you as a writer or yeah. an artist um, and allows you more latitude to kind of right. spruce them up a little bit. Like I... Never in a million years. If you said, Clay, I'll pay you a hundred thousand well. Sure, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say for a hundred thousand dollars I'd probably do it regardless We're of the episode. We're giving you the but... bug episode. <laughs> yeah. Well no, honestly, no, I I would rather take the bug episode than right. something like if if you handed me heart of ice, yeah, I would probably say no. Yeah, honestly, if I had a hundred artists who all put their hand up and then I'm gonna assign them all, I would not want to be the heart of ice guy. Yeah. Because it's like Yeah. <laughs> I or, want a good strong B. But I want to make it into an A. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think I think it's more fun creatively to have a little bit more latitude to be like, all right, there's a kernel of an interesting idea here. Right. Yeah. Even I think I think that might be my memory of the Bruce Wayne gets married episode. Right. Because now that I'm remem- remembering back to our conversation, I think yeah. it, I was like, there's a lot of potential here right, that they right. didn't really have time to get into. Right. That episode is very shallow, and I feel like it could have been really deep. Yeah. They really explored it. But yeah. season four wasn't really about depth for the most part. Mad Love aside and other few a few other episodes aside, um, it just was much lighter, and it just got to the action quicker, and it didn't like marinate in drama as slowly as season one through three did. Yeah. it's And they just... Um, I don't... I don't know what it is. It's not like they had less time. Maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe they had less time because there are more commercials. I know that is a thing in animation. Yeah. Like some seasons of The Simpsons run a little shorter because they were playing more commercials and stuff like that. Right, yeah. But yeah, there were so many in season four where like uh, even even great ones like the Roxy Rocket episode. Right. It wraps up so fast. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. I might want to draw that one. Um, As like a... I'm a default pulp guy like if mm-hmm. you show me a pulpy character i'm already in even in the 90s you show me the shadow or uh, phantom whatever rocketeer i'm in i was disappointed when i found out that the rocketeer was a relatively new character i thought he was old school like 1930s character i guess i never really considered that yeah but yeah he's the guy who's famous for drawing him is the guy who created him right right yeah uh, uh dave stevens stevens yes yep. 
who worked on Indiana Jones storyboards and a bunch of other stuff that I'm forgetting. Oh, did he really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's got he meant he made most of his money on storyboards and then you could kind of convince him to do comics every now and then. Um, obviously the Rocketeer movie was a big payday. <clears throat> well, I would assume it was a big payday for him. Is he did he die? He is did. He, he did. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I bought a print of Rocketeer signed by him, framed and everything for like 200 bucks at Golden Apple back when it was at the old location mm-hmm. um, near uh, Melrose High. This is like 15 years ago, maybe 20. Yeah. Uh, and they were just liquidating because they had to move. And I was like, man, I, and at the time, I didn't make a lot of money at all. And $200 was a lot, but I knew like this is definitely worth 200 bucks. Is that the one that's in your office? It is, yeah. 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 And I love it. It's got an authenticity certificate with it, which I don't care about. Uh, signature and pencil. And it's a giant, like, uh, I don't know, 40 by 20 it's big um and then when he passed you know people were offering to buy it from me and i i hate um people try to monetize an oncoming death right yeah so uh, sergio topi another artist we talk about when he got sick his art value went up which i get it as a capitalist i there's no avoiding that yeah but it just annoys me (laughs) in spirit you know that's why (laughs) the secret to my success is and always has been fake your death fake my own death yeah which, now that I've said that, people are going to see it coming. They're never going to see it coming. Yeah. 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 Now we all know. <laughs> what are you looking up on your phone? All 300 people will know. But keep that secret. And two of you are traitors. Keep that secret until I cash the check and I redo my beard into something. I do a fugitive and I shave my beard in my head. Yeah. And then appear doing something else. I was just looking up. I figured it would be nice to actually have a, re- a working knowledge of the episodes we covered. So I just mm-hmm. pulled up the episode list. Yeah. And I was going back through the first season. And, um, yeah, they took a lot of chances in that first season because you've got uh, See No Evil, which is the episode about the guy in the invisibility suit. That's, yeah, that's a top five for me, for sure. Yeah, but on the other hand, you have Prophecy of Doom, Oof. which is the uh, the one with the cult leader uh, that has the uh, finale that takes place. Are there pipes from the 1800s, too? The water looks like... It's just air. <laughs> okay. It's safe to drink. <laughs> It's like a tombstone over here. Um, that what the Parfum Doom was the the cult episode that has the really kind of amazing finale inside the the planetarium. Right. That's really cool. But the rest of the episode is just yeah, great, great set piece. You're right. This water does look good. Yeah, the water looks like a pina colada. I don't know if that's good or not. I think it's just there. Yeah. See, it's getting clear at the bottom. Of the oh, place. I see. Yeah. Just, just oh, water. it's like a, it's like a Guinness. You yeah. have water you need to let sit. It's, for a while. I, I actually had nitro capsules installed. <laughs> Conversational in water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they also had. Um, oh, I was surprised at how much I liked the Clock King, because I never, oh, yeah. I never th- took him that seriously. Right. And. This this watch throw that glass freaked me out. So sorry, cut through. We have a I have a self swirling bourbon glass. It's a glass that's sort of cone shaped on the base, and you're supposed to put one of those uh, sphere ice cubes in it, so it rolls around. Oh, so when you put okay. your drink down, I don't know if the mic can pick it up. It kind of rolls a bit, but yeah. your instinct is to be like, "Holy yeah. shit, it's gonna yeah. on the ground." <clears throat> so go ahead. Um, yeah, I uh, I kind of recognize the Clock King to be occupying the same space as the Riddler, sort of. Right. But the Clock King was way more interesting. Yeah. Like, they were doing more interesting stories with him. They only did, I think, two. Right. Right? Just yeah, that basically. first season, then I think he comes back much later. Yeah. But, um... Better than the Riddler, you're right. Clock King was... Yeah. And it's kind of... It kind of a- accentuates the problem with the Riddler, or the difficulty with the Riddler, because he's so yeah. kind of not quite the Joker... But he's kind of in the same ballpark as the Joker. Right. Um, and he's not quite anything else. He's got a very specific thing that he does. Yeah. But it's... Excuse me. Yeah. So, uh, I'm now I'm hearing you talking, I was starting to think about my least favorite villains from this series. Mm-hmm. I think my two least favorites were... And I love the episode of Mad Hatter. When yeah. he... The one origin story of him I thought was great. I don't know what else he does outside of that that you can take seriously, though. You know, yeah. I, I use him a lot in White Knight, but I use him as like a de facto father figure, and I, I like him in my book. But if you ask me to write a story where he was the big baddie, I, I don't know what to do with that. Yeah. So yeah. he was a big uh, disappointment for me, as well as, um, I guess the Riddler as well. The two that I wouldn't want to deal with. Yeah, 
I still, I didn't at the time, and I still now, I never liked Red Claw. Red Claw just, I don't know. I like I yeah. I go going back and looking at I, I at the episode list. It's like oh, they actually took some interesting chances introducing yeah. new villains that might not like the invisible guy. That guy's never coming back. You know, you're not seeing that guy in right. Yeah, you know, a two episode arc or something. Yeah, it's better um, that he's retired after just one. Yeah, Red Claw <laughs> has a bit more reusability. Yeah, so I kind of appreciate that they're trying to introduce these new characters, but. I don't know. Red Claw just never landed with me. See, I don't like Red Claw in the series. I like her look. And if you gave me a sure. story where she's the villain, I can write a James Bond villain, probably. Like, I yeah. can probably come up with something that's halfway decent for her. Because the structure and the bones are there, mm-hmm. as far as how they actually executed it. And whoever convinced uh, Kate Mulgrew that she can do a convincing Soviet accent... <laughs> That's the one note I wish I could time travel back and be like, do not tell her doesn't she, she does Russian. Doesn't she do that on Orange is the New Black, too? She does that, and she did it in um, Voyager. She was a holodeck misfire episode. She was the... It was all in black and white. Yeah. It was a pulp, like, Flash Gordon-style thing, and she had to pretend to be um, the bad guy. And she had that fake kind of mustache-twirling um, thing. I think on her resume, someone wrote... She does a Russian accent pretty well for a villain, and no one ever erased it, and everyone's convinced that she can do it. Yeah. And I like her, but I don't, <laughs> I don't think her Russian accent's that's good. That many times, <laughs> it feels like it's something yeah. she's actively bringing to oh, the yeah. table. Oh, yeah. That was not by accident. There is at least three times in her career where she seems to have gotten hired. Great. You do Russian accents. Awesome. Let's not even test you. I was just looking her up on the, the off chance that maybe... She's from Russia? Family. No, she's from Iowa. Yep. So... Yep. <laughs> There, are there a lot of Russians in Iowa? I, I, I am not sure. Not after the 1950s. Isn't there a conspiracy theory uh, that you you must know that puts Russia as an I, Russians in? Wow. <laughs> are you just thinking about uh, uh, Red Dawn? Actually, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> but... based, based on fact. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Is, uh, uh, is there anything from this series that you were surprised found its way into your own work well uh man so i knew the harley stuff was going in there i knew mm-hmm. i wanted to bring back the old harley but keep the new harley uh i was surprised that my joker was based more on two-face sure than the joker yeah. and based more on scarface than the joker scarface About, the puppet yeah mean? yeah okay. see the man the the uh Puppet master, what's his name? Ventriloquist. But thank you. Ventrilo- yeah. So you have a split person, two split personality characters where they're very similar in that the evil personality doesn't always tell talk to the good personality. Mm-hmm. And there's legit reason to suspect, oh, you really have no recollection of what happened. You do have two people inside of you. Um, so my Joker was more closely related to those two characters than the actual Joker. Sure. But I sort of knew that. I mean, I. When I started writing the script, I, I realized I need to play down Two Face because if yeah. I show Two Face being Two Face, it's going to be too similar. So mm. Joker is basically Two Faced uh, in my book, and that's just kind of the thing you have to sort of go with. Right. If you're not right. into that, then you're not going to like my book. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I was I was interested, and I, honestly, it was only coming up because we were both so deep into yeah. White Knight as we were going through this, where some right. things would pop up and be like, oh. That's interesting. That's very similar to what he's doing. I'm, I'm not, and I think most of it was like not on purpose. Yeah. And it's like, it's not like yeah. huge stuff, but I was always kind of interested right. when something would pop up and be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I can see where maybe that kind of snuck its way yeah. in. Yeah. And when I, we got to the episode, the trial, where Batman oh, is sure. on trial and it's a, a kangaroo trial or whatever that's called. Oh, yeah. Um, that was a good one, too. I remember liking that one. And some of the arguments they make, it's like almost word for word what I wrote <laughs> and I did not do the con- make the connection there and yeah. i'm happy to to wear my flaws in my state like i'm not insecure about these things I'll, i'd rather admit it and be like oh well you do yeah. your best you can i you mean know? it's not a flaw <laughs> you know it's just an influence you know? yeah it's that you're not actively yeah ripping anything off or attempting to right you know? yeah um yeah the trial that's one that i didn't think i'd like as a kid it's like you think about courtroom dramas being lame when you're a kid mm-hmm. it's like boo give me the police chase scene with guns going off don't take me to the the courtroom afterwards where these cops are testifying boo yep 
as an adult though you're like oh man this is really interesting yeah. <laughs> these these cold hearts stares like, yeah, these characters as, are giving each other when you're a kid you're watching star trek and you're like i don't want to see a trial about whether or not data is a human and then later you're like this is the best episode they've ever made <laughs> I know. oh man um yeah i think if i was editing a line of books for each episode would be a one shot i would try to get you to do clayface because i think mm -hmm. it would fit your style especially all the mud you've drawn and oh, yeah, bloody hell you are one prime. thing i want to draw more of is mud <laughs> your your mud <coughs> your mud uh references are, are tight right now i know yeah. yeah giving you a car or superpowers i don't know but mud yes <laughs> i shoot all my own reference my house is disgusting <laughs> gross um yeah oh you know uh go i'm looking back at season four honestly it, it's it's so frustrating to me how specifics of these episodes don't stick in my head anymore right like we've watched on the star trek show we're in our fourth series of star trek right and it's just anything that happened more than two weeks ago on our show right no idea do you have a, a history of um what would the, the disease be <laughs> The disease of not retaining <laughs> yeah. science fiction. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, it's just, I think with that one, it's just, there's, we've gone through so much of it. Is it Tourette's? That, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> that it just doesn't, a lot of it doesn't stick after right. a certain point. You know, yeah. you give me a couple signposts, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. But, right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I completely forgot about Joker's Millions, which I really like. The one where the, the, yeah, season the four. Barlow dies and leaves the money to the Joker and then yeah. it's all a joke. I remember, like that one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Growing Pains, but talking about Clayface. Growing yeah. Pains is a fantastic episode. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. I'd like to see. I don't know if they did anything with that character, Annie. Um, actually, the cover I did for Paul Dini, they did a, um, as a new Batman animated comic book series. Mm -hmm. And I did a cover for issue one or two. And it was the worst cover I've done in 10 years. <laughs> like, I'm not happy with this cover. But there is a section of it Excuse with me. Robin and Annie with a, a scope right behind them if you just cut that part out like i'm so happy with that yeah but the rest of it with the uh, death stroke i just i don't know i was trying to filter dini in and it just screwed in my head and it was yeah sorry yeah. whoever owns that cover i apologize um i forgot about mean seasons which is a bit of a stinker yeah the calendar girl episode that's true but with great animation though. yeah great name too good good name for a character uh um, I think my biggest surprise from this entire experience was how prominent the brand manager became. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. I don't remember when that started. It might have been the Two Face yeah. episode. His origin for you and me on this podcast. Yeah. The brand manager has to be at least four years old now. Yes, I think it's back to the first season. Best, I think. Okay. Yeah. 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 I I'm think... sure if you played, if you just cut out brand manager chat, mm -hmm. it would be a lot of us repeating ourselves. I'm sure it is. Like, yeah. we should create a character. Next episode, we should create a character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the Star Trek show, um, once we got into Enterprise, I made a habit of doing a uh, fictionalized version of Rick Berman as a character. Yeah. The, yeah. And the, the joke is that he only likes the sexy stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> one of our listeners, I think it was Kyle, cut together like a super cut of all the times that we did that oh and it was it was something else yeah it's, it's mark it's very similar voice to the brand manager <laughs> yeah oh you have your <laughs> brand manager is a little bit more new york than rick right Bowen, but it's a similar voice yeah. yeah can you do a boston accent uh you know that's okay so, so clay lives in somerville which is in boston so clay should have a boston accent and i, I probably do to a lot of people who are listening who are not from the area right but i lost my accent pretty decently when i went to college right because it was the first time i realized i had one right and so then i kind of forced it out right um and i think the weird thing about boston accents is people who have it and do it naturally it sounds natural mm -hmm. if you lose it and try to do it again it always sounds fake right like anytime yeah. affleck or damon or any of those guys do a boston accent everybody right. else is like oh my god it sounds so good I'm like that sounds so fake it sounds so <laughs> fake <laughs> It's funny. So you don't have a Boston accent, but your O's. You don't okay. say Boston. You say Bois. You have Bois. You okay. have like a W in there is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Um, I focused mainly on the R's, I think, when I was trying yeah, to, to get Yeah, that's the it thing. Right you, you, you definitely pronounce your R's. Because mm -hmm. um, I was raised and born and raised in southern New Hampshire, which has enough Boston 
uh, run over the runoff. Yeah. Was when I started. I just did it. When I started. <laughs> it sneaks in every. It now. does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I started <laughs> landscaping at it at age nineteen, um, I was with a crew of people all from Bill Ricca in Boston, oh, sure. and I got yeah. a, a wicked bad Boston accent. Oh yeah. My, I, my girlfriend's from Bill Ricca, so okay. It, yeah. It comes out every now and then. <laughs> but yeah. my whole life, uh, going up through grade school, like the the assholes in my class in you know second third grade all had low rent boston accents so Interesting. Yeah. when i was young i really tried to rid myself of the boston accent and have like a news you know like i went in the opposite direction to define myself i wasn't purposely doing it it just happened yeah so when i started landscaping i was suddenly able to, to do it because sure. i've been around in my whole life but if i try to do it now it sounds fucked up that's the thing. If you actively try to do it, yeah. it sounds fake. But yeah. if you let it naturally kind of slip out, then right. it sounds a little bit more natural. So we went to, uh, uh, I want to do this every year. We went. I rented a cabin in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and we had a bunch of us up there. And Joe, our friend, uh, has a wicked, perfect Boston accent. Mm -hmm. And being around him for four days straight, mine started coming out. Yeah. And I wasn't even trying to do it. And our friend Corinne had never heard me do that. And I don't know if it sounded like I was trying, but I, I was not trying. Yeah. But suddenly yeah. I forgot what, the R, what an R sounded like. <laughs> I remember the first time, and thank you for joining us for Boston Talk. <laughs> I, uh, the, when I first came back from college in freshman year, I was hanging out with a friend of mine. And he was asking his dad for directions. Yeah. And his dad said, yeah, you take 495. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And yeah. that, that one I did there yeah. was not good. Yeah. But his was like thick. Yeah. And it was the first point where I was like, is this what I sound like? Right. Because yeah. I never, I had been outside it enough that I kind of like pushed it out. Yeah. And so then to hear it so baked yeah. into the, to the right. language, it was very distracting. Yeah, like if I didn't know you, if I met you and Joe in a bar in the Midwest, neutral ground in the Midwest somewhere, mm -hmm. and I'm from the area, so maybe I wouldn't notice at first. I definitely would notice Joe right away. Mm -hmm. You, it might take me a few hours before I caught your O's. And I'm like, oh, are you, are you from Boston? You yeah. could have told me New York, and I would have been like, all right, you know. But they are kind of similar in, in, in ways. The, uh, the grossest experience I've had with the Boston accent is I was at my 10-year high school reunion. Yep. And my girlfriend came with me. She's also from Boston, Bill Ricca. And uh, we were talking to this kid I went to high school with who I did not like this kid. That's not that's not part of the story. What but if he's one of our 300 listeners? Then I appreciate you listening. <laughs> Maybe he's one of the two turncoats. Yeah, I appreciate you listening. <laughs> Everything between 1999 and 2002, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Um, He's not listening. <laughs> no. So he had moved to Florida, and he 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 br came back with his wife. And so my girlfriend's, I'm kind of talking to him. My girlfriend's talking to his wife, and afterwards, uh, she turns to me and goes, "Yeah, his wife was really nice, but she at some point she was like, ugh, and that accent, that Boston accent, it's so hot, isn't it?" And my girlfriend was like, "No, it's yeah. not. It's the grossest accent." <laughs> so I, I lived in L.A. in 2000 three for about a year and a half mm -hmm. longer and we were still goodwill hunting was still kind of <clears throat> in the recent memory yeah and i could switch on my bot my bad boston accent to talk to girls at bars ah. no problem and oh my god like oh my god you sound like goodwill hunting and that would get you laid Ugh. having a fake box That's, boston accent that depresses me so much yeah because it's so objectively gross <laughs> yeah it is and i'm glad no one from boston was in the bar with me because they would have heard my 80% of the way Boston accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, it was funny to me because I would tell these girls, you know, it's, I guess it's hot when a guy does it, but a girl doing it in Boston, like I thought even in grade school, if a guy has a Boston accent, fine. If a girl does, that's trashy. Yeah. It, like a girl, like, Donnie, cat, blah, blah, blah. like, and usually yeah. they're angry and wearing, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> a jumpsuit on the side of the road complaining to a cop about a, something. A, a four X size sweatshirt. Is what it is, usually. <laughs> like Amy Adams did a perfect one. Oh, she was great. Yeah. And I, I've not been able to watch her since and I have nothing oh, against yeah, her, yeah. but she did such a good Boston, a trashy white girl Boston accent in the movie, the boxer or something. Yes. Yeah. I can't get her out of my, I, even when I watch her in that, um, spate with the aliens where she's a, Oh, Arrival. Arrival. Yeah. Great movie. She's awesome. I can't fucking stand it because I keep listening. I all I hear is... Well, the, the key to that movie is the is the way they communicate is through Boston <laughs> accents exclusively. It would have been great. Gonna... We're going to call these two yeah. aliens Johnny and Maki. We've, 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 we've deciphered the language and they're asking if we park the car. 
in Harvard Yard. Um, no, anytime I hear the Boston accent from a woman, I assume it's worse. I assume that there is a yeah. uh, large size iced coffee inside a hot coffee yeah. cup on yeah. its way towards my head. So I've known guys with a hard Boston accent who uh, were landscapers and easily made three hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. If you are a worker and you're a, this is sexist, but it's just how it is right now, uh, or how it was. Um, just because you're a guy in a blue collar bar talking like that mm-hmm. doesn't mean you're not wealthy as fuck. Oh sure, absolutely, yeah. especially under COVID where these contractors are making. But a girl with that accent, guaranteed, she's not that wealthy. <laughs> Well, the guys, you get them drunk enough and their English accent comes out. <laughs> yeah, oh, sure. they, they think I'm from Bill Rico, but I'm actually from Oxford. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, anyway, back to, back, back to, to Batman. Yeah. Batman. Um, did, you, did you find that you learned anything, like storytelling-wise, by going through this again? Especially because you were doing this, you're in a u- unique position because you're working on Batman as we're going through what you would point to, I would assume, as the yeah. primary influence yeah. or inspiration for White Knight. You know, that's interesting because, like, you know, episode one of this is like, yeah, I'm thinking about maybe pitching a Batman story. Mm-hmm. Episode two is like, yeah, I wrote a thing. Episode three, yeah, they're kind of going for it. Episode four, yeah, my editor doesn't really like it, but they're going to give it to me anyway. Episode like, five is, I could rip off the whole show yeah. <laughs> and no <laughs> one would know. Like, Have you seen POV? That's like basically... Yeah, no one else has seen it either. You know, what if Joker or Two-Face were the same? <laughs> like, if you really want the sort of biography of White Knight, it sort of starts with this podcast in a right. way. I mean, yeah. it's not every episode, but there's yeah. enough nuggets in there. Um, and I'm so bad at filtering myself and not spoiling things, but it, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's funny. Now, now that I'm... I'm going to sound arrogant for a second. Now that I'm, quote unquote, Sean Murphy at my publisher, I have seniority over anybody I work with. Sure. Um, before, I had editors who'd been there, who were lifers, who'd been there forever. And um, there's still a few hanging around, but i am now been with DC for 15 years. Wow. Most of the editors there, on and off for 15 years, mm-hmm. most of the editors there are younger and like grew up with my stuff in some way. Sure. So even when... I used to get phone calls from marketing. I just did it again, marketing. I used to get phone calls. See, I didn't catch that one. <laughs> yeah, so you're you from cut, Boston. Yeah. Uh, I used to get uh, phone calls from marketing and the talent rep, like, hey, you know, you said this on Twitter, be careful, blah, blah, blah. I used to get reprimanded for whatever. Now I don't because they're yeah. like, we're working with Sean. He's our Frank Miller. We're just happy to be on White Night and we're just going to just take go along for the ride. Like what I say kind of goes Sure. And I'm not looking to throw my weight around or be George Lucas. Like I, I only uh, work with people that will push back mm-hmm. on me, which includes you, of course. I, it's I think all it's, I do, and he does. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> a wicked lot. Yeah, uh, that was another thing. Not to derail. Yeah, I didn't know that wicked mm-hmm. was not a worldwide. Oh yeah, uh, adjective. Yeah, wicked, <clears throat> uh, bang a Yui. Yeah, when I the first time I said it was actually my church's youth pastor who was from alabama yeah when i said wicked he was like i'm sorry yeah that's what, a weird what are you one. talking about yeah like, wicked you know like, yeah. wicked cool <laughs> and uh like, no that's not something people say water fountain is a bubbler uh-huh bubbler not a thing yeah. a stoop is not a, they know what that is in new york when you go past that yeah stoop is... i i never was a stoop i was more of a porch person porch yeah yeah it's more porch than stoop What's yeah. hilarious about this is we we uh, think that we don't have Boston accents, but again, I think anybody who's yeah. outside of <laughs> the Boston area is going like these right. guys are out of their fucking minds. So one last <clears> thing, <throat> I'm going to test you, and then we'll get off the Boston accent. Yeah, uh, I don't want to say the word because I want to prime you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the Mexican cocktail you drink, say that word that starts with an M. Margarita. Did you say the R? No, I didn't. I, I say margarita yeah. still. I'm worse than you are. Yeah. I like, thought you were going to ask me what it's called if you drive your car into an area where you have to go around in a circle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Rotary. Rotary, yep. yeah. Yeah, rotary or, oh, yeah, roundabouts. Fucking weird. But yeah. England has uh, like 40% of the round... Ra- no, sorry. France has 40% of the roundabouts in the entire planet. Wow. Yeah. I don't know why I just thought... Of that. And they're not... What's the French word for roundabout? I don't know. <laughs> Lay roundabout. Yeah. Qual- round- sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so is there anything else you want to talk about? <clears throat> Um, what are we doing next? How about that? Well, uh, after this, uh, I think we're going to do we're going to do the world's finest episodes, the crossover, the Batman and Superman crossovers. Yep, it's four episodes that make up that uh, VHS movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we should probably do Mystery of the Batwoman just for completion's sake. Yep. I'm actually, honestly, I'm kind of interested to see it because I've never seen it. 
Yeah. And I wrote it off so much at the time, yeah. and I think it, it never really got the, we'll do the those press two. behind it. Do you want to then do the the newer one where it's like Batman and Harley where she's farting in the Ugh, back of the seat? I really don't. Let's I, hold off on that one for Yeah, a while. let's do it in chronological order so we won't yeah. have to do it for another 15 years. <laughs> Um, and like I know a lot of these people, I don't want to have a podcast with me shitting all over. What if they're really proud of the Harley fart scene? Yeah, yeah. There's lots of stuff in there where I was like, I can't believe that they got away with this. <laughs> yeah, there's a yeah. scene where they have the two, uh, the twins who I think are yeah. they Two Face guys. I don't remember who they're. They're they go into a bar that's full of the henchmen. Yeah, and the, there's the two twin guys with like the buck teeth and the bow ties and the right. short hair oh yeah yeah can't yeah. remember who they work for i yeah. assume it's too they look like howdy doody on yes. steroids yeah yeah they're on stage singing karaoke and there's a certain point where they are in a pose that explicitly looks like the other one is is giving the other one a blowjob and i was like <laughs> you what who was was anybody watching this when they were making this well, the fart joke got through. Why not a blowjob reference? And I mean, uh, yeah, <clears throat> Night, Nightwing and Harley have sex in that in that movie. Uh, Harley basically rapes Nightwing. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty aggressive. So yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess they were just happy to be to get yeah. Bruce Tim back or something. But <laughs> um, yeah, after I mean, and after we do that, I think we'll jump into Batman Beyond. Yeah, I'm already in Batman Beyond, obviously right. for research. Um, um, hopefully, you don't mind. Rewatching them or talking about them. Or, no, so. I'm actually getting into. Uh, I'm watching JLA animated and JLA Unlimited at the same time, mm-hmm. skipping ahead and back and forth. Sure. And uh, Unlimited is uh, we like it better. My wife and I we yeah. like it better so far. But uh, yeah. I remember uh, a handful of years ago, I think when it first popped up on Netflix, I started watching Justice League the mm-hmm. the first run. Because I had never watched it before. Yeah. And the first thing that caught me off guard was that every episode's a two-parter. Yeah. There are at least two or three. Yeah. And so yeah. that was a little bit jarring. And also, yeah, I, my memory of Justice League Unlimited is like, oh, they have so many characters to work with. You can really tell any story you want. Yeah. Whereas the original one, it's like you're kind of stuck with the, the characters they have are great. Yeah. You know, that version of Wally West, The Flash, is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The uh, mini-movie thing. It's cool as a writer, but it's tough as a watcher because you've got to commit to a 90-minute episode yeah. to get the whole story. And if it's something that you're not totally into, like, I, the one that stands out to me is there's an episode where they go to Apocalypse right. that involves Dark Side. Yeah. And at the time, I was like, I don't really care about this. And it, yeah. was, it was like, oh, like, two episodes of them dicking around on Dark Side. It's yeah. like, okay. Is that when the planet was gone but it was just a holographic projection maybe i don't i honestly yeah. don't remember <laughs> there was yeah. one where they show up and they they're like in a uh an arena battle situation i can't remember if yeah. that was you're gonna um, have to be more specific yeah i'm sure that happens more than once <laughs> um but no i'm i'm psyched to eventually if we keep doing this after batman beyond to do justice league because i didn't really watch justice league unlimited one same on. here yeah and yeah. they do they go so deep with the characters in that show yeah I just watched an episode that was about Hawk and Dove, and I didn't know anything about them. Yeah. And Hawk and Dove is basically red versus blue as far as politics. Oh, sure. You yeah. have a guy who's a you know, bleeding heart liberal. You've got a guy who's a conservative, whatever. And yeah. it's not so over the top where you feel like you're being lectured to. Yeah. But I'm like, man, that's there's got to be a great Hawk and Dove story now in the era of Trumpism. But yeah. I would not want to do it because I don't want to lose my career. <laughs> they have Hawk and Dove on the Titans live action show. Yeah. And I don't know if I want to say anything about that show because I don't like it. Okay. But Hawk and Dove are so violent. Mm-hmm. Everything in that show is extremely violent. And right. That, that really kind of turns me off to it. Right. But it's like the backstory for Hawk is that he's got aggression problems that stem from the fact that he was abused when he was a child and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's a lot. And it's yeah. just, it's, it's. Yeah. You know, and the original Dove ends up getting killed and all this other stuff. And it's like, right. it feels just so yeah. dark for the sake of being dark. But yeah. this show in general is kind of dark for the sake. I don't know. It's yeah. just, that show has not clicked with me, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. But Because it's cool. I mean, <laughs> if you look at that show, you've got Dick Grayson as Nightwing, Hawk and Dove, uh, Starfire, mm-hmm. I think her name. Is that her? Yep. That the, yeah, yeah. The Marvel character. I can't remember. No, it's um, DC. Yeah. Uh, Beast Boy shows up. Yep. Uh, and then Jason Todd's a big part of the first season, and then and later on he becomes yeah. Red Hood. 
uh, Wonder Girl and Superboy show up. So, like, they're really going for it. Right. These live-action characters. I just hate the version of all of them they put on screen. Were they wearing the really over-the-top Silver Age costumes? No. It's like they're wearing their costumes. But uh, Hawk and Dove are pretty accurate to the comic, surprisingly. So the JLA version had them in, like, mostly white costumes with accents of either blue or red. Okay. And it had it was really Silver Age. Like, it would have looked odd, I think, if you filmed it that way. It's uh, it was. <clears throat> I was surprised at how comics accurate they actually went because they, right. the, the Hawk and Dove you see in the show is actually the Liefeld version where Dove is a woman. Okay. And the Liefeld version has these big Liefeld goggles. Okay. And she has those in the show. Yeah. So I was kind of I was kind right. of impressed that they went through. Let me see if I can pull up a picture of them real quick. <clears throat> okay yeah that's yeah so the animated version is a lot simpler than that yeah. you would not be able to make a costume that it would look insane if you actually did it that's yeah. better that's a nice middle ground i'd say i do find that's one of the things i find fascinating about the era of so many live action <laughs> yeah. tv shows in the movies they've long since been like oh yeah we can just do the comic it's right. fine it yeah. looks great yeah TV, there's still that like budgetary line right. where <clears throat> we're trying to do a comics accurate suit right. with the budget of a television show right. where everybody fights in like abandoned factories. Yep. And so you kind of like yeah, some it's of a it CW is. Vibe. <laughs> yeah, some of it kind of comes off as a little bit j- janky, mm-hmm. but it's also cool to see the legit costumes and stuff. Right. So it's you kind of you kind of have to yeah. shut your brain off and. Yeah. Enjoy it to enjoy it, you know. I think uh, I want to re- let's let's end this podcast. Sure. Let's do one right now about Batman Beyond the White Knight, and I can ask you questions, and you can be honest and give spoilers okay. for what you're doing, and you don't have to release the second one until three months from now. Oh, okay, so you want to do a second episode right now? Gotcha. Yeah. So okay. we'll, people listening, me, you can make it pay to play or whatever. It's up to you. Play. Yeah, we can put that on the Patreon. Yep. Yeah, we had. I think the Marvel stuff. People were interested in that. Hopefully, they'll come back for for more uh, inside scoops on. Yeah, any blowback on the come. Marvel stuff I did? No, I mean not to me. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't see any. Uh, yeah, it's weird. If the, here's the problem though: is I I hate the word famous. If I get to be more of that word, mm-hmm. and then people will really see that there's a money to be made to be like, all right, you know what? Someone needs to go and listen to all of Sean's podcast. Let's really drag him. <laughs> that is a concern of mine. Um, I don't. Th- I think most people know that this is tongue in cheek and all that. But if yeah. you really wanted to be mean on Twitter, there's probably some things you could drag. And sure, that's yeah. don't encourage anybody. I'm not I'm sorry. say that. Not, yeah, <laughs> never mind. Forget what I said. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have any uh, general final thoughts on Batman the Animated Series? Well, I so yeah. here's maybe this is a tough question to answer because I as I'm thinking it, I think it is. One of the things that we talked about in our first episode was how this show seems to be the thing a lot of creators point to as yeah. the most the the most comprehensive best version of the concept of Batman. Right. Um do you find that to be true having gone through it? Do you find it to be false? Do you think there are reasons for that in either direction? It's kind of a big question. I but. think it's true. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing that I take away from this <clears throat> is you got it's great storytelling. Mm-hmm. It's clever it's a very clear show. They're not, it's, not, it's not loaded up with <clears throat> crazy CGI and quick cuts and camera and, and poorly written scripts like a right. lot of stuff now. And I'm going to sound like old man yelling at cloud for a second. <laughs> but I feel like this is very solid. Like There's a reason this is standout. Like I don't doubt that five or ten years from now, I'm going to meet established professionals who have not watched this. Mm-hmm. They have watched... Brave and the Bold, and that's mm-hmm. their Batman, and they're going to say that's the best one. Like I, I know that that's going to happen. Not to cut you off, but I'm, I've I've met people since where I've been like, oh yeah, we talk about Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. But recently, I said that, and they're like, oh, is that the one from like the nineties? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's happening. Yep, that's it's, it, and that's okay. That, that's how it's supposed to be. But I think the and the, at that moment, I was like, you're younger than I am, and yeah. a lot more successful than I am. This that's hurts. an age. That's an age anyway. tell right there. Yeah. Um, but you know what? What I think I appreciate about this. Sh- show the most is it this is my biggest connection to nerddom Mm -hmm. that i have um i grew up drawing comics and liking them but i was afraid to tell anybody that i like comics sure i didn't read them in public if i drew a sketch of like 
young blood if someone found my drawing at junior high and was like oh man good drawing i'd be embarrassed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um I remember a girl I liked, uh, I drew some logos <clears throat> and I swiped the font that uh, Rob Liefeld used for Youngblood. Mm -hmm. And I wrote the word Converse or something because it was for sneakers. And uh, this girl I liked at age 12, she's like, oh, I like your logo. I go, thanks. And she goes, actually, I know where you got that. And I got really embarrassed. I'm like, oh my God, she knows she knows that I read Youngblood. This is so embarrassing. And then uh, a day went by and she told me it was some other logo. I'm like, okay, thank God she doesn't know that I like comics. See, that's funny because I think <laughs> if that was me, I'd be like, I'm sorry. Do you want to get married? <clears throat> <clears throat> Assuming that it was Youngblood. Like, yeah. I've met a woman who knows what Youngblood is. <laughs> I know. I'm glad I didn't. I know I'm 12, but I feel like I'm not going to do better than this. <clears throat> so fast forward to, you know, I went to college and the industry collapsed and I didn't know it. I thought page rates were still as high and image was still as strong as it was back in 1995. Yeah. And I graduated college in 2002 or three. Um, and I'm starting to work professionally and I'm going to this, this phenomenon called a convention, which I didn't know what it was. So I went with my friend, Sean Crystal and a few other people to this like yard sale flea market convention thing in, in Orlando, which is Megacon. And I'd never seen people dressed in costumes. I've never seen like a nerd flea market before. And yeah. I was still uncomfortable like i was the kid getting college credit working for dark horse while i was still a student and i was mm. still embarrassed about it um and that's something that's i've i've all i've always struggled with is like even now i don't have any comic book shit in my house i have it all in my studio sure, in my yeah. carriage house which is like <laughs> the whitest thing i've ever said where the servants stay yes <laughs> um Side note, there is a servant staircase in this house. But it went... There's a whole floor you don't even use. <laughs> no, that's where the servants were. Why would I go there? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I won't make this joke. Um, so uh, I, when I meet my readers now, even though I don't quite get why they like Hellboy. Oh, actually, I like Hellboy. Well, why they like Just League Unlimited so much. Sure. Why they like Hawk and Dove. And why they look at those costumes and go, oh, I think this is great. I understand that this has severe, uh, important emotional meaning to them mm -hmm. in a way that is unclear to me, but I, I I can empathize because I have it with this cartoon series. Sure. With this and with Star Trek TNG, those are my tethers to understanding my my readers. Mm. Um, I don't have to get why they're all crazy about X, Y, and Z. I don't, you know, or if they're going on a, a, a tangent about One Piece Man. I haven't read that yet. Um, one Punch Man, sorry. Oh, one Punch Man. Yeah. yeah, One Piece Man. That's actually not a bad title. <laughs> he only has one gun. He's one of those. He's one of those Gumby toys. Remember, like the ones that you know. Oh, I got a Batman toy. No, it's one you of those bendy ones. You don't need points of articulation. No, make it out of rubber. Yeah, just make it out of rubber and put like a, a steel string in there. There's only two you know, action wire. figures that we made sense for, and Gumby is one of them. Yeah, yeah. And the other is his horse. And you try to put them in like a fighting position, but they got that big U bow on the elbow because it's not articulated. Yeah. But I think for me, uh, the thing that makes me understand my readers is having my own nerdy connection to the sure, shit. Sure. So they can be into, you know, D&D uh, &D or whatever. Even readers are into furries. Uh, I have a brother-in-law who's a furry. So, mm. like, I'm I'm not weirded out by any of it anymore. But I still, to this day, have a hard time telling strangers that I draw comics. <laughs> yeah, you know, honestly, I think, <clears throat> and this is, I think, goes to... If, if this is how I felt from public perception through media, then I can't imagine how uh, people in certain situations that are much more life and death or real or really matter aside from comic books. Right. This is, I, this, this is a long way of me saying, um, not articulately, like my, I was, a, I was much more of a comic book nerd than you were when yeah. I was a kid. Right. But even I was like, no, I don't go to conventions. That's where the nerds go. <laughs> and that's exclusively because of the way that I perceived them through right. television and anything else. It's like, oh, comic right. conventions are where the nerds go. Yeah. On The Simpsons, they would go to a comic convention. That's where all the nerds are. Yeah. And so, you know, like I can't I, I can't imagine what that's like for people who mm -hmm. see themselves represented in negative lights in various right. different states of life that they're in. Yeah. But like it's uh it is the kind of thing where it's like, oh, you kind of go to these things and you and you recognize that everybody's got something they're into. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And even I, I think fantasy football is hilarious. Right. Because yeah. 
when I saw fantasy football, I was like, I don't understand this. And then someone explained it to me, and I'm like, yeah. it's Dungeons and Dragons for football. It is, yeah. It's Hero Clicks for yeah. quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. It's like everybody's a nerd about something, you yeah. know? And yeah. it's, it's, yeah. But it is, yeah. I had the same thing. Like, I still, I've probably said this before, but I remember being at a Christmas party a couple of years ago. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, where my girlfriend's younger Infinity Gauntlet cousin, yeah, yeah, girl cousin was telling me about the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. And I wanted to be like, you don't understand. Yeah. If I said this to anybody when I was your age, <laughs> no one would hang out with me. And now it's the, the coolest thing in the world is the fucking Infinity Gauntlet. I love that. You're going to know who Adam <laughs> Warlock is in like three years. <laughs> Everyone is, and it makes me mental. But I love it. I mean, I, yeah. I like that it's become more ubiquitous. But yeah, it's yeah. it's a this is an interesting touch touchstone. This show, yeah, because it does seem to be something that everybody respects. Like the thing is with this, this the reason this show is more important than Brave and the Bold and the Batman, all the other <clears throat> shit, is it was the first that kicked off. Like there wouldn't be Brave and the Bold without this this series. Oh sure, yeah. or any of the other shit or JLA. Like because of Tim Burton and Batman mm -hmm. doing so well, it led to... So we'll, we'll credit Tim Burton, I guess, as the person that kicked all of this off. Yeah, I would say so. Is he got... He basically got this... Shows like this approved, and this approved this proof of concept for X, Y, and Z. And here mm -hmm. we are, you know, 20 years, 30 years later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think... While I don't disagree that Batman the Animated Series is probably the, the best interpretation of Batman... Yeah. I would amend that and say, in my mind, it's a combination of Tim Burton's Batman mm -hmm. and this show. Because of exactly that reason. Because yeah. I think that is what sent people down the road of, oh, you can handle this in a different manner that's not just Adam West in tights. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> exposed that. I mean, at this point, <clears throat> Dark Knight Returns has already been out. Mm -hmm. The stuff with the Neil Adams, Denny O'Neill stuff had been out. But that's in the comics world. Right. Michael Keaton as Batman is the first time the larger world sees something other than bam, right. pow, whiz, right. whatever. Yeah. And I think those two things back to back where it's here's the live action version of it that's a new interpretation. Yeah. And then here's this other thing that's inspired by that. Right. But is equally as inspired by the actual comics. Yeah. And those two things together, I think, is what yeah. makes it so versatile. And, and Yeah. And the, the, the other part of this, too, is... Animation before 1992 had basically been there's a house style of animation that was um, He-Man and you know uh, Thundercats whatever it generally mm -hmm. looked rounded it wasn't squared off um, edges on things and when this episode when this show came out Bruce had a jaw that was literally a right angle and you had characters with squared off fingertips yeah that had not really been done in a mainstream way ever <clears throat> and even when the execs were looking at some of the I don't know, dailies, I don't know what you call them. Yeah. They're like, oh, why is Batman's jaw so square? It's so interpretive. It's so, like, you know, German and French. Like, this looks like some artistic expression. Like, they yeah. were sort of like, what yeah. is this? This doesn't look like He-Man. And I think that people who are listening to us right now who are younger might not know that, that this is the first show that pulled off, like, a quote-unquote weird style. Mm. It's not that weird now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, in context, like, that had never been done before. Yeah, and it pulls from, from everything. Yeah, the it, Fleischer stuff. Yeah, it pulls from Fleischer. It pulls from Alex Toth. It pulls yeah. from Hanna Barbera, which I mean, T Toth was doing a lot of those designs yeah. and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it pulls from the comics. It it really does take a little bit from the entire history of Batman. Yeah, which is even back to the pulp stuff. It is a very pulpy show. Yeah, and so I think that's why everyone looks to this is because it has a little bit of everything in it. Yeah, you know, it goes from street level pulp story to mm -hmm. fighting giant monster bugs yep. or demons and shit it's like every <laughs> every facet of batman is covered yeah and it's all consistent and handled with more or less the same amount of care yeah 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 i couldn't put it any better myself no oh, all right so uh <clears throat> let's we'll do uh the world's finest next mm -hmm. um and then we'll get into batman oh sorry and then the batwoman yep and then uh, we'll get into Beyond. Yeah, yeah. So uh, um, hopefully that'll be sooner than later. Yeah. Once the, I mean, this will come out, this will, should be out the first week of January. Yep. So uh, once holidays are over and stuff, we can 
regroup and, nice. and see and what works. No editing for you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll see about that. No, I think I'm, I might have to mess with the levels and stuff. But generally, sure. content-wise, I think we're good. Yeah, <laughs> so. I didn't say anything that that bad. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for uh, uh, for listening for the past Jesus four years. We've been doing this, um, and we will be back soon with some movies and then a badass beyond. <laughs> Let's go.